But like I said, it's because he gets the most heat. That is why they put the belt on him. It's kind of like with JBL. Nobody, everybody looks at Bradshaw and they say, you know what, the guy's not worthy, doesn't have what it takes to be a champion. And yet when they put the belt on him, you know, people, had, people were hoping month after month after month after month for somebody to take it off him. And basically they had to wait almost a year before, before John Cena was given the nod to take it off him. You see, that's why they put it on Bully Ray, whether we like it or not. It's because he's the kind of guy that, even though he, you know, attraction rise will not draw in name that, well, basically by name, will not draw in the crowds, like a Jeff Hardy or even an AJ Styles. He's the kind of guy that if you put the belt on him, he's going to attract people in just by his heat. Just by the fact that people are going to want to pay to go see him possibly lose the belt. People are going to want to go pay and tune in to see somebody try to take the belt off him. That's why they did it, whether we like it or not. And honestly, and honestly, even though a lot of us saw Bully Ray being part of Aces and Eights, even though we saw that coming with the possibility that Brooke's going to join him, you know, down the line, if not sooner, the thing is, we, the thing is, even though we saw this coming, and even though some of us, out there, some fans, don't like the idea that he's champion, here's the deal. And, then not, and, and also, that this is nothing more than a rehash of NWO, O, if you will, with Bully Ray being the president, thus the leader, and whatever. Even though a lot of fans don't like this, even though some have said he, he's earned it and he deserves it, yes he does, he has earned it, and earned a shot at being champion, even if it's short term, even if it's more like a transitional term or a situation. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, folks. Whether we like it or not, it's the one major positive business-wise that's come out of this for TNA is it's called smart strategy. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, look, I, I, I agree. Bully Ray, he deserves to be a champion. He deserves at least one run, transitional or not, short-term or not, he deserves a run with the title. I'm not saying he doesn't. He's earned it. Whether we like the fact that he's in his 40s and he's the champion, he's earned it. I mean, look what he's done. Ever since they separated him and Devon, he's trimmed down. He's gotten back into bed, he's gotten into good shape. But the thing is, you know, whether we like it or not, he is still, whether we, he is, you know, whether we like it or not, he still earned this opportunity. And he, at least for a short time, deserves to wear the gold. But again, whether we like it or not, and like I said, I agree he's earned it and deserves at least a short reign. Hey, not a long reign, but a short reign. Hey, I do agree that, as I said in part one, he's not a name that's going to, you know, just by name is going to attract people in, going to bring people in. He's going to sell out the small arenas. What he is, though, from a business standpoint, is the kind of guy that is going to have people tune in and watch... TNA, they're going to have people pay tickets to go to these live events, go to these impact tapings, go to these pay-per-views, depending on how long his reign is, just to see somebody try to knock him off as champion. That's why, in a sense, that even though it was predictable that he was going to join, and I'll give him credit, kind of adding the twist of him being the president, but pretty much predictable that he was going to join at the end of the pay-per-view. And that even though he's not the kind of guy that, by name, is going to attract people in, from a smart business standpoint, him being champion, depending on how long his reign's going to be, helps draw in viewers to the show, helps draw in ticket sales to the live events, as well as to the pay-per-views. It's gonna, basically, it's going to be like 2005 all over again, where fans would tune in to SmackDown 
would pay to go to a live SmackDown event, if you will, and basically hope and pray somebody, and heck, even order a SmackDown branded pay-per-view at that time, and hope and pray that somebody knocks JBL off as champion. You know, and I know the same strategy was used for Hogan when he was Hollywood Hogan and all that, but you know what? It wasn't as bad because of here's, here's the situation. Not, here's the situation. People were hoping somebody would knock him off. But here's the deal. They weren't hoping as much as they were with JBL because Hogan was an icon. They didn't mind him being champion. The only people they hoped would knock him down were the ones that did. Were the ones that did knock him off. And even though for someone like Lex Luger, it was temp even though it was a temporary week, if you will, week-long deal, at least he did it. At least he knocked him off and became champion. The other guy they wanted to knock Hogan up, down and take the belt, of course, was Sting. He did that. And then, of course, after Sting, who was the more logical choice? Of course, Bill Goldberg. And that happened. The point is, the point is, you know, the thing is, with those, with the exceptions of those three names, no one really had a problem with Hogan being the, uh, the champion at that time during the NWO run. And the difference, again, like I said, between him and JBL was people never saw JBL as a champion. They didn't like JBL as a character. In fact, sometimes they still don't. But the thing is, even though they didn't, you know, but the thing is, is, and the difference is, the re, but the thing is, when they put the belt on JBL, we, you know, like I said, despite how people felt about it, it was a smart business decision because they knew, depending on how long they were going to run with him as champion, the more heat he got, the more money and more viewers it was going to bring in. And that's the strategy that TNA is going on with, with Bully Ray. Whether we like him being champion, whether we feel he deserves to be champion or not, and whether we thought it was predictable that it was going to happen and he was going to be part of Aces and Eights and all that or not. But, you know, what TNA is doing is basically following that same strategy. And it all depends on the heat that he and Aces and Aids keep getting with him as champion. I mean, if he remains as champion up until Bound for Glory, that might be a positive for TNA because it's going to attract in the viewers. It's going to bring people in. It's going to want people to watch the product. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's a smart business decision. And the difference between this, and I will say this, it's going to be crazy, but the difference between this and what R.H. did with Scum, is you already had a champion in Scum, and your champion at that time, I don't know what really happened or not, but your champion at that time seems to be very wary of this whole situation. You know, your champion doesn't really want to have no part of this, if you know what I mean. So unless they, so unless I missed something, and I probably did, because I don't get Ring of Honor here, unless Kevin Steen was in on it the whole time, and he's still part of Scum, well, if he's going to disband from them, and they're going to send someone like Matt Hardy after him, the biggest difference here is people love Kevin Steen. They don't want to see the belt go off of him. And the only way Ring of Honor could get the same kind of heat that Bully Ray is going to get as the champion and have people want to see that belt off of somebody is if they put it maybe on someone like a Matt Hardy or a Cliff Compton or whoever. Or even a Jimmy, I don't know, whoever they can choose. The fact of the matter is, just like the title says in both videos and in the playlist, the reason fans felt lockdown was a letdown was because of all of what I mentioned. But they have to admit, even though they felt lockdown was a letdown, these fans, some of these fans, they have to admit that what TNA's doing with Bully Ray right now, even though it was predictable he was going to join Aces and Eights, and even though some of you feel he's not worthy of being champion, 
you have to admit it's a smart business decision because the more heat he gets, the more revenue it brings in for TNA and the more viewers it brings in. Because you're going to want to see who knocks Bully Ray off. And you know what? I'm going to talk about that in a little bit as to why Bully Ray is champion, the reasons behind it, and where it's leading to. And believe me, I think some of you pretty much know the answer as to who it's leading to and why. But believe me when I say you will not be surprised, and you may be surprised. Because there's a couple of scenarios, believe me, but I think you'll be surprised. So that's all I'm going to say on my thoughts of, on my two-part video, video of basically why some fans felt lockdown was a letdown. Let me know what you guys think down below. I know I'll get some agreements and some disagreements. But let me know what you guys think. I'll talk to you all later.